live from the new sports betting capital of the world. You might be from Texas, but I'm from New Jersey. Benny Ricciardi is here to break down the day's betting board for you. Let's go, Go! Taking a first look at the day's bets, it's time for the FTN Betting Show. Welcome to the FTN Betscast for Thursday, May 12th here at FTN Bets, sponsored by our friends at Sleeper. Sleeper is the fastest growing fantasy platform today with millions of players. And now you could win on Sleeper by playing in their new over-under game. It's super easy to play. First, in any sport, you're going to choose two or more players that you like, and you're going to pick whether they're going to go over or under their listed total. So, for example, in the NBA tonight, we have the number of points, the number of rebounds, number of assists. Maybe it's the number of turnovers or three-point shots that they make today. And you're going to pick whether you want them to go over or under that listed amount. Once you choose that, you're going to choose an amount of money you want to enter into the contest. If you pick correctly, you could win two times your money, all the way up to 20 times your money if you pick five out of five and get them all correct. But the main reason why I'm excited about this over-under game on Sleeper is that it's the only app where you can join with your buddies and all play together. It has a built-in group chat where I can see what bets you're putting in you can see what contest bets i'm entering here and we could all kind of copy each other's and play along together it's insanely fun when everybody is together in the group rooting for the same things to happen and when we all win money we all win money together so so stop what you're doing here and download the sleeper app now to play in their new over under game have some fun with your friends and make some money if you're on your mobile device join our listener group at sleeper.com backslash ftn bets and Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. Again, you're going to go to sleeper.com backslash FTN bets, and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit. There are terms and conditions that apply, so see Sleeper's terms of use for those details. Today, we have two NBA games to talk about here in the playoffs. We have the Miami Heat taking on the Philadelphia 76ers and the Dallas Mavericks taking on the Phoenix Suns. We're going to start with the Miami and Philadelphia game. This is a series that is sitting at 3-2 right now. So far, the home teams in the series are 5-0. Everybody's been able to hold serve. Philly is where this game is going to be. In the last two games in Philly, Philly won by 20 points and by 8 points. The three games in Miami, Miami won by 14, 16, and 35. The first two of those games, though, being played without Joel Embiid. The main injury news piece here is actually on the Miami side today. Kyle Lowry is the one guy who has been ruled out. There are four or five guys listed as questionable on Miami, but Miami has listed those same four or five guys questionable literally every game of the series. It's like it's PJ Tucker, Max Struess, uh, Gabe Vincent, Tyler Hero, and there's one more that I'm forgetting here. But the reason why it doesn't matter is because these guys have been listed as questionable and have played every game anyway. So I'm not expecting any of these questionable guys to sit with the exception of Kyle Lowry, who has been the one guy that has already been ruled out. Even on the Philly side, Joel Embiid is listed as questionable today, and I seriously doubt that Philly is going to go into this game in Philadelphia with their backs against the wall in an elimination game, and Joel Embiid is not going to play. Now, Joel Embiid has been playing. He has not been playing. I don't want to say he's been playing bad because he hasn't been playing bad, but he hasn't been playing great either. He's not as aggressive as we saw him during the regular season, 10, 12, 14 shots. Um, field goal attempts is really always taken in a bunch of these games here. He has played the minutes. He's up there into the thirties, the mid thirties in his minutes. So that's not an issue. That's not the reason why, you know, again, maybe their defense is very, well, I shouldn't say maybe Miami's defense is very good. So maybe it has something to do with the defense. Maybe it has something to do with him being a little banged up and not a hundred percent. I don't want to speculate on what the reason is. All I'm doing is letting you guys know that if you look at the box scores, if you look at what has happened and, and transpired in the series and the games that he's been back, it's not the same level of Joel Embiid that we saw during the regular season when people were expecting him to be the MVP or you know one of the candidates that was up there along with guys like Giannis and Jokic this year. So let's see, what do we have here? Uh, Philly is favored by two points in this game. So the home team is favored again in this one, uh, minus two, minus 110. You can get that over on Caesars best price. If you're looking to play the 76ers in this one, Miami, you can get as high as plus two and a half at minus 110. both MGM and FanDuel have the game sitting at that level right there. I mean, if I was going to play one of the sides here, I would rather be on the Miami side, I think, than the Philly side, despite the home court advantage here. I had thought Miami was the better team throughout the entire series. 
Um, I thought they were the better team coming into the series. So the fact that it's sitting at three, two right now, you know, again, I think Miami can beat them one game in Philadelphia. I don't think that's a big deal. So I would rather be on the Miami side of this than the Philly side of this. But honestly, I did not put a bet down on either one of these, just giving you guys which way I'm leaning here. As for the total in this game, th- this is a really tough series to bet totals because none of these games have been played the same way. Game one was 198 total points. Game two was 222 total points. Game three was 178. Game four was 224. Game five was 205. And the spread today, it opened at, I'm sorry, the total today opened at 207 and a half. You can play an over 207 on win bet right now at minus 108. That's the best price to play an over there. If you want to play an under 207 and a half points bet minus 110. There's a lot of places out there that have this at 207 minus 110 to both sides. So, you know, that's uh, kind of where the consensus number is. But again, if you look at the totals we've had in the series, you know, let's take that 207 number here today. The last game was 205. So that was basically a coin flip. Could have went either way. Wound up going under by, you know, one bucket there. The first game of this series was 198 points. The first game in Philly was 178 points. So you have games in this series that were 10 and 30 points below the total that we have listed here today. You also had game two and game four, which were 222 and 224, which are 15 to 20 points above this total here today. And that's really why it's tough to bet on a total because, I mean, if you put this on a chart, you're going to have one or two numbers that are completely to the left, one or two numbers that are completely to the right. And the fifth game that's right around where the number is here today, it could go way over. It could go way under. There's really been no rhyme or reason to it. You know, what we like when we're looking at playing a total or playing a side is when we can look and we can see, hey, they played four or five, six times this year. And there's a cluster of scores around this number here. And the number is way below or way above that number where that cluster is, because the cluster is the most likely outcome. There really is no most likely outcome in this series. I mean, we've seen games with Joel Embiid where, the Sixers lost by 20. We've seen games with Joel Embiid where the Sixers won by 20. I mean, really, how are you supposed to handicap that? It almost seems like it's just a whoever comes to play on any given night kind of thing, which, again, is fine. And knowing that and knowing that it's a good thing to stay away from is a, a good value for us. What we know is that, you know, we can't predict the unpredictable. And this series has been as unpredictable as any of the series that we have out there. After the first two games, people were saying Miami's going to sweep. All of a sudden, Joel Embiid comes back, and then it's 2-2 going back to, you know, Miami, and people were picking Philly to beat them in Miami. Well, Miami comes out and beats them by 35 points. So this has been one of those series where whenever you think you know what's going to happen in a series, pretty much the opposite happens here. And when we have something like that, what it really says is there's a lot of volatility, and this is not the best place to be putting our money down if we're expecting a return. So I'm staying away from the sides. I'm staying away from the totals. I don't have a bet on either one of those in this game. I do have a couple player prop bets that I want to talk about, though. Two of them especially that I think are better plays for us to look at on the sleeper app than they are on the sports books here, and I'll explain why. So the first one is I'm going to go back to the Tyrese Maxey under 19 and a half points well. In the three games that Embiid has played, he's taken 10, 11, and 10 shots. In the two games that Embiid didn't play, he was averaging 18 and a half field goal attempts per game. Now, here's the problem that I have. And again, it's going to be the same argument for anybody who listened to the podcast on, what was that, Tuesday, I think, was the last time these two played. When you're only taking 10 or 11 shots and you need to score 20 points, you need to be super efficient out there. The last couple games, Tyrese Maxey's had like four, six free throws. Okay, so maybe we get a couple free throws there. You still need him to score 15, 16 points, though, to get over this from the shots that he's taking. And again, if you're only taking 10 shots, even if a couple of them are threes, you know, you're not giving yourself the potential to score a ton of points here, right? So, you know, he's going to have to be like super efficient in this game. He's going to have to shoot like 60%, probably have to shoot over 45% from three pointer. Um, You know, he's going to have to put up a lot of threes if he's only taking 10 or 11 shots. There's just a a lot of things have to go right for Tyrese Maxey to get over 20 points in a game where he's only taking 10 or 11 shots. So as long as Embiid is playing, we have seen those shots drop basically almost in half the series. So I like Tyrese Maxey under again. And the sports books and the betters kind of agree with me here because, you know, BetMGM has this at minus 130. DraftKings and Caesars has it at minus 135. Unibet, Sugar House, and Bet Rivers already moved it up from, you know, um, 19 and a half. They actually moved it down to 18 and a half there. 
And even at 18 and a half, it's still minus 106 on that side. So, you know, again, this is one of those things where the under does look like it's way more likely than not to happen. At minus 130, minus 135, we're looking at like a 57% chance, 57% probability of Maxi going under that number here today. So that is one that I'm going to be very interested in. And again, I don't want to lay the 135 as much on the sports books. I'd rather play this on the sleeper app where, you know, again, I think we can get some really good value out of it. The other one that I think is a good value on the, on the sleeper app here today is going to be Jimmy Butler over six and a half rebounds. This is listed at minus 140 on DraftKings, and that is the best possible price you could find on any of the sports books on this. Everything else is in the minus 140 all the way up to minus 148, which is, you know, a really high number to see. I would not be shocked if we start seeing some of these move it up to seven and a half here today. None of the books have done it yet. I haven't seen the seven and a half out there on this rebounding total. Everything is six and a half. But again, if you're juicing it to minus 130 all the way up to minus 148, you know, there's a good chance that's going to go to like seven and a half at like, you know, minus 115 or something pretty soon. So even at seven and a half, it would still be juiced up, which means that the over is a very good thing to look at here. Jimmy's gone over this number in three of the five games this series. He's averaging close to seven and a half rebounds per game in this series. We need him to get to seven right there. I do think there's a little bit of an edge on that. Again, do I want to lay minus 140 on the sports books? No, I don't want to touch minus 140 on the sports books. But on the sleeper act, Minus 140, that's a 58, 59% chance of happening. That's something that I would definitely be interested in. So I like Tyrese Maxey over um, under 19 and a half points. I like Jimmy Butler over six and a half rebounds. Two good plays to play on the sleeper app here today. As for the series here, um, again, it's 3-2 in the series. Miami has a chance to close it out today. Miami is minus 380 to close out the series today. If you think Miami is going to win today, though, I'd rather just play the money line. You can get Miami on the money line at plus 115 today. I think that's the better way to do it if you're going to take Miami in the series. Now, if you want to take Philly in the series, that's a different story. Philly, uh, DraftKings has Philly at plus 300 to come back and win the series here. You're definitely not going to get plus 300 in a game seven on them if they win today. So if you think Philly can win today and puts this to a game seven and you think they have a chance to win the series, the plus 300 number is something that I'd be interested in. Did I play it personally? No, I think Miami is going to win. I think Miami has a chance to win today, and I definitely think they win if the series goes back to Miami. So I'm not touching anything there. I'd rather be on the Miami side, but I don't want to lay minus 380 in order to get there. So like I said, if you're interested at all, I think the way to play it would be taking like maybe a plus 115 money line on the Miami Heat to win that game here today. So let's move on to talk about the second game. The second game is the Dallas Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns. This game moves back to Dallas for game six here. Phoenix is up 3-2. Much like the other series, the home team in all of these games has been the one that's held, uh, held serve so far. Home teams have won all five games of the series. Dallas had two wins in Dallas. They won by nine and by 10 points. And then in the games in Phoenix, they lost by seven, by 20, and by 30. So again, I don't really know how you want to play this. I think Phoenix is the better team here. I actually like Phoenix laying minus one and a half points as a road, uh, road favorite here. Minus 115 on BetMGM is where you can get that. Most of the sites out there, most of the sports books have this at minus two, minus 110, or plus two, minus 110, which is actually the best price you can get on the Dallas Mavericks. Caesars, DraftKings, FanDuel, Bet River, Sugar House all have this game at plus two minus 110 it's kind of the standard number in the market but like i said if you are interested in the phoenix side which i am you could get them at minus one and a half minus 115 on bet mgm i think that's where the best value is here today so let's see let's talk about the total here real quick total opened at 213 um so far this series the first two games were 235 and 238 the last three games though 197 212 and 190 has been the you know, the final scores in those last three games here. The number is right in the middle of those two, basically. You know, we have a 213 total was the open. Uh, you can play an over almost everywhere here at 212 today. You can get an under at 212 and a half on BetMGM for minus 110. That's the best. That's the highest number if you're looking to play an under. And then, like I said, DraftKings, FanDuel, Caesars, points bet all have this at 212 minus 110 on an over here. Uh, 213. I mean, the first two games went 20, 25 points above this. The next two games went, you know, 15 points below. Well, 
the two of the next three games went 15, 20 points below this. And then we had one game at 212 that was right on the number. So again, this is kind of similar to what we talked about with the Miami and Philly series. If you make a, you know, you make a little graph, you put all these numbers on it, you're going to see two of them clumped together very far to the right, two of them clumped together far to the left, and then one dot right in the middle of it, right on where the total is today here, basically. So if you're asking me where my lean is here, I, I guess I don't really have one. You know, again, the trend in this series has been to lower scoring unders. Um, you do have good defensive teams. You do have teams that play at slower paces. So, you know, it does make sense to look at the under here. I would think that the last three games are probably more, more predictive of what we're going to see tonight than the first two games were when, you know, Phoenix was putting up massive numbers and jumped out to big leads and Dallas had to chase them and, you know, play a lot faster than they want to. Dallas at home, I think, is going to try to control the pace and play it at their pace. And Phoenix can win at that pace. Phoenix is a very good defensive team. They're good in the half court. They have no problem playing it that way. So if you were asking me to pick a side, I would probably take the other. Bet MGM, 212 and a half, the highest, pro the highest total out there. And you can get that at minus 110. Now, as for the player props, there are three player props that I'm looking at here. And I'm actually sticking to some of the big name players in this one. So the first one I'm going to talk about is one that I'm willing to play on the sports books. And that's Luka Doncic under. 33 and a half points. So the first two games, he went nuts. I think he had 45 and 30 something, but he tried to play one on five and they lost both of those games. The next three games, when he let his teammates get a little more involved, he had 26, 26 and 28 points. So it's not like Luca played bad or wasn't scoring or wasn't looking to score or anything like that. You know, he still did a lot of scoring. 34 points though, is asking a lot. Like even in a playoff series, even for a superstar, even for a guy who's going to play 40 minutes, like, 34 points is not an easy thing to do in an NBA basketball game. So I like the under here on Luca. Like I said, three games in a row, he's been under that. He's been under it by a decent margin too, like six, seven, eight points in each of those games. So minus 105 on DraftKings. I thought that was a pretty good price. So I played Luka Doncic under 33 and a half points here. The other two that I like are not great to play on the sports books because of the juice on them, but because they're juiced up, that makes them great plays to look at on sleeper. Both are on the Phoenix Sun side. The first one I want to talk about is Devin Booker rebounds. So in the series, he's averaging over five rebounds. On the season, he averaged five rebounds per game. And the number for him today is only four and a half rebounds to go over. Minus 134 on FanDuel, minus 140 on DraftKings and, and the BetMGM, up to minus 150 on Sugar House and Bet Rivers. I'm shocked that they haven't moved that to five and a half if you got something sitting up there at minus 148, minus 150. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt if we see that at some point during the day. Sleeper, though, has a locked in at five and a half there. So again, if you're talking about something minus 135, minus 150, you know, you're talking like a, a 58, 59% probability of happening. So those are the kind of plays that we definitely like to take on a sleeper app. Devin Booker, over four and a half rebounds, fits that bill today. One of my favorite plays over on sleeper. Another one that I'm kicking around over on sleeper is Chris Paul, over eight and a half assists. So again, he had 10 assists last game. He hasn't had massive assist numbers in some of the other games this series, but just kind of look at, at, at the sports books right now. Look at the betters. Look where the money's coming in on this. You know, this opened at eight and a half minus 110. It's the lowest number I can find on this right now. It's over eight and a half minus 135 on Caesars. You got minus 140 on DraftKings, Vandal, and BetMGM. And some of the smaller sites like a Sugar House, a Bet Rivers, a Unibet, Already moved this up to nine and a half assists. It is juiced up a little bit, plus 110, plus 115. But still, the fact that they're moving it up to nine and a half and the people that have it at eight and a half have it at minus 130, minus 140 means this is more likely to happen. Again, going on the implied probability of a minus 135 payout on an over eight and a half, you're looking at somewhere around 57% or so, which means this is another one of those things that's way more likely than not to happen. So we do like the Chris Paul over eight and a half assists here today. So on the, on, the, on the whole here, if I'm looking at what plays I'm going to make here today, the two that I like in the first game, Maxi under 19 and a half on sleeper or Jimmy Butler over six and a half rebounds. I think I probably like the Maxi under 19 and a half points a little better, but I do think both of these are definitely in play. Both of these are definitely something that I would be looking at here. And remember, if you guys want to play, Go down to the description of this podcast right here. You'll see where we have the sleeper.com backslash FTN bets. You click on that. It'll bring you not only to our group over on sleeper. So you can follow along 
with what all the guys like me and the rest of our friends at FTN are playing. But you will also be able to get that deposit match bonus up to $100 just by clicking on that link below. So go down in the description of this podcast, find that link, click on it, and come join us over at Sleeper. As for the second game, the second leg of this, uh, you know, two play that I'm going to put into the contest, I think the Chris Paul over eight and a half assists is probably what I like a little more than the Devin Booker over four and a half rebounds. So my play of the day for sleeper would be Tyrese Maxey under 19 and a half points in the first game and Chris Paul over eight and a half assists in the second game. Remember, you can deposit 100. You will get matched 100, which will give you 200 to play with. If you put that 200 on the Maxey and Chris Paul play that we're talking about here, the payout for it will be plus will be six hundred dollars, meaning you got a plus five hundred return on your hundred dollars invested. If you go put a hundred dollars into one of the sports books right now and try to parlay those two things together, your payout's going to be like three hundred thirty or three hundred forty dollars. So this is obviously something that you should take advantage of if you live in one of the states where you're able to play on Sleeper HQ. I know it's not available in New Jersey, but it is available in a lot of the other states. So for those of you who don't live in a garden state like me please make sure you guys take advantage of that. It is basically free money and we should always take advantage of free money when it's out there. So there you go. That's going to wrap it up for our NBA playoff breakdown for Thursday, May 12th here at FTN bets on the FTN bets cast sponsored by sleeper. Good luck, everybody. Live from the new sports betting capital of the world. You might be from Texas, but I'm from New Jersey. 